Good morning, continuing the festival of the emancipation of the first Lubavitch Rebbe. The 19th Kislev goes on to Chav Kislev when he was freed from the opposition's house. Happened to be a Jew. Um, the original mimer Pad Vesholem that speaks about the emancipation of the soul comes from the Mittler Rebbe's Kislevs, actually, the author of his son. In Shari Chuba has a minor part of the Shalim, redeemed in peace. It's interesting because prayer is called war in the Zayar. The time of prayer is a time of war. Yet the main davening is on Shabbos, and there's there's a davening that's like Shabbos, that's not meant to be a war. It's meant to be when the animal soul is asleep and the natural um, experiences of the godly soul um, and being able to achieve its uh, tranquil objective without being disturbed by the animal soul, like pestering it. If you've ever had a dog that needs attention. So there's a peaceful redemption from that beast. It's when you make friends with the animal and it becomes your pet. Now, that process of transformation happens during tefillah, in prayer. So a lot of this treatise on the gateway of prayer discusses which part of you is engaged when you're davening at different points in the tefillah and why is Shemun Asri the highest and what is Dveikus that is the the darkness welcome thank you the das which connects the world of Mashiach is a world that's immersive in das, in experience, in presence of mind. What's our presence of mind going to be devoted to? It's going to be in pursuit of a relationship with Hashem. When is that relationship complete? When it achieves Vekas, when the very defined and mortal soul, the well, soul's not really mortal, but the way it, um, when it comes down to the lowest level of consciousness, it, it actually doubts its own divinity, as we all know. Welcome. I'm glad to see someone else gets up early in the morning to learn Hasidus. We're discussing what Dvekis is. If that's the whole point, to have a visceral or a very intensively aware state where you and Hashem become one and you experience that sort of like the, the diminishment of the, the mortal perspective and the assu assuming the divine perspective. If you were God, what would you do? Would you enjoy your infinity? And that enjoyment is an expression of a very high level of divinity called Kesser, I guess you could say. And that's expressed in davening, when you reach b'chol me'oidecha with all your might, and you connect to Hashem with all your might. What does that look like? According to the Mitle Rebbe, the reason why it uses the word vacus, to be dubbed, to be glued, to become one, is in fact to learn from a very engaging experience of human connection, which happens in a physical body. To become a one body is meant to be a way for us to learn about what the unity with our Creator is intended to um, resemble. As it says, in his heart cleaved for, I think it's talking about Dina. Um, it's a, not an obsession, but um, a engaged connection of soul. 
the ken the dabak be ishtai, as the verse says, and he cleaved to his wife, the Mitzvah Rebbe writes here, v'hayu echad, to become one body. Shinyani beis gufnim shenis dap guba eitven she'echad v'leiz lasai, rak kechatzi guf. It's in a way to see that your body, as you would think exists, um, is only really half of its full structure. Remember, Adam and Eve were first created as Siamese twins, literally, and they had to be split. So you're supposed to assume that type of unity when you, my feelings are and the other's feelings become one, even physically. So. Seeing oneself as without that other part of me, I'm only a half a body. As it says, one's wife is considered halakhically like his body. Because of the birth, that unity produces a birth, what, what of? That is um, a new awareness that extends beyond your previously defined body and now sharing that exact experience with the other. This is the, intended to teach us what Vekas is, what Tfilah is intended to feel like. The whole point of this joining is that the two should not be distinguished at all. The, the awareness of any distinction is completely eviscerated. You might have not known um, the other person. It's very rare that you grow up in the cradle together. Um, like, you could like wave to your future mate, if I guess if you're born on the same day. And this is because the true destiny, or destination rather, of this vacus, of this joining of two bodies, is that all of their parts should come together. The, There's two ways to understand this, this connection. One, it's a full. You only saw yourself as half before. Now, you, now you've joined with, you've extended your own um, concern, your own awareness. But there's another sense that there's a true unity in that it's eternal, it's never changing. So it exists in space, your body just became bigger, and it exists in time, it's eternal. The, the vacus is meant to be something that you just know is always there and you can always revisit it. That's why Tfila in a way is a ladder, not just in the morning, but from day to day you progress. You've already achieved a certain awareness yesterday in your davening. Now take it a step further. You don't have to fast a hundred fasts to go from one step to the other. It's all relative. So the true point of this joining is that the bodies will become one and the duration of that awareness is eternal. It never changes, even if you go away on a trip. That's why it says, Zaysa pom etzim matsami basarib sorry. Adam says, now this time I see that you are very, my very essence and my flesh. Imken amru ishte kegufe damyo. And if so, that's why the sages teach that a one's, that one's wife is considered like his body, and therefore you can still say a bracha, etc., or whatever the halachas apply there. So the idea is the constancy, welcome, of the union. That vacus is meant to be something constant, just like true love is something that does not waver. You never stop loving your child just because. They didn't wear the right socks that morning. So there's a constant unity, 
with, without any sense of separation, forever. The Yeshkan base Milas. So therefore you have these two um, um, de destinations for these, these two activities of Dvekas. One, your body extends further, your, or in terms of your relationship with your Shem, your self-concept expanded. And that it's constant, you don't slip from that. It's, it's a powerful enough to um, elicit the next steps. That's why it's called Vekas. The, the Mithra Rebbe writes, the second Lubavitch Trema. Welcome. That's why it's called glue. You take two things, you glue them and you fuse them. Because it's known that the function here is that you, that of Dvekis, is that you take two things. One whose quality is to take two different things, so you misachadim mamish, and join them literally together, to literally become like one body, and not being at all to, de to detect that they started as two different things. That base ikar to elas So the second and the main quality of this glue is that it should be specifically something that is constant and forevermore. And never um, leaving each other again. True tefillah is not something you could ever turn your back on again. It's like not rem remembering the canoe trip that um, the, the thousand mosquitoes in your tent were your neighbors. And that's the main quality of this glue, this ability to fuse two things. If you don't have crazy glue, it's not going to last forever. Forevermore, called kaf. And after a certain time, that union will sour and split. Or maybe an outside circumstance could take it to an undesired place of disjoint, disjoining you. Good. All of this discussion was in order for us to understand what Dvekis is all about in the spiritual sense of the word. Can my D book base? Because these things are supposed to be things that you know already. Right? If you're over 18, you could reach the highest magazines in, when, as a kid in the, in the grocery store. That was just like you reached a certain stage of maturity. But it's meant to be something that's so engaging that it teaches us the most important lesson about what it means for your soul to become one with its creator, Dvekis. And again, he uses an example from personal issues here, we're talking about two souls. Before we were talking about two bodies coming together, and now he gives an example of two souls coming together. That they have these both two qualities, that two souls just became one, and these two souls that became one are one forevermore, never changes, never leaves or, or gets weak. To be literally like one um, a one experience, not like it becomes the shared experience of you and Bestie. And then he gives another example of two souls coming together, which is King David and Shalom Alech's son, Jonathan. Because it's called a soul love that they had together, and that's why they're the epitome of love. It, Rabbi Wagner, God bless him, taught me that. Him to all those who need him for Shlema. That the love that they had for one another was considered called a soul love, that base Shalei Ipardu. And not only did they become one 
consciousness, they be, totally became together, like they sort of aligned their, their souls forever. And that it will never change. Kemay shal v'yenasan b'chayeim. And here it says shal, I think it means to say David. I think it's actually a typo. Um, because we just said David and Yenya's son, and Shaul is his father. I think that's a typo. And after, even after death, they will never depart. This, this type of love between David and Yenya's son. And each of these two types of joining the expansion and the, the duration, the eternal aspect, it depends on each other. Because if you really connect and join together, you never ever change that. It never falters. And with this we'll understand the dvekis that the souls of the Jewish people have, the atzmu selakus, with the essence of God, as it says, when a man cleaves who is girded in loins. Okay, that's the verse that he quotes. Um, it's supposed to be, um, you'll see. And from the soul's yearning or being lit, the soul is lit, it has this own initiative uh, towards Hashem. The Knesset Yisrael Amar, that the Jewish soul says, And in him you shall cleave. That this has both aspects. So we went from bodies to souls to all of the souls together connecting with, with Hashem to become one. The Rebbe spoke about that till the better end. And this is expressive of the inclination of the soul to want to join with its creator, as opposed to what it's fused with in its body is this animal inclination, which the quadruped, the four-legged creature, his tendency is to look down, I guess, to look for grass or something like that. Whereas a person is able to look up. That's why you have to tell the sheep, the sheep look up. In the name of that science fiction book. So the godly soul has this natural yearning for Hashem. Hashem as it says, to you Hashem, my soul goes up. Shezeu amitis his kavlus vespatlus ba'atzmus alakus that this is expressive of the ultimate uh, subsuming, like this in being engulfed <coughs> and, <coughs> and, um, and nullified, meaning that one's mortal perspective becomes completely nullified in what? In atzmus salakus, in the very essence of divinity, without being anything separate at all. Rak b'mahus alkus mamish, being completely one and synonymous with divinity. Have a great day.